an important economic principle that dates back to the 17 and 1800s. It's called comparative advantage, and actually along with it is absolute advantage. To illustrate this, let's imagine that I have, as the weather turns warmer, that I have to face mowing my lawn, pulling my weeds, basically taking care of my yard. Now, if I was to do that, it would take me about an hour to do all the things necessary once a week or every other week to uh, sort of tend my yard. It's not a big estate or anything, but there are grass to mow, weeds to pull, and so on. But let's imagine also that there's a young kid in the neighborhood. His name's Tommy, and he'd love to do my yard work for me and charge me you know, some money for it, maybe six bucks an hour. Tommy, however, is much younger, smaller, and not as much experience, so he's, it would take him two hours to do the same job that it would take me one hour to do. Well, Adam Smith, back in the late 1700s, would say that I had absolute advantage. Absolute advantage goes to the party who can do it better, quicker, and cheaper, and in that case, that's me. But let's take a closer look at this uh, all the alternatives between me and Tommy. Now, if I were to mow the lawn and pull the weeds and so on, I'd be giving up some time where I could be working on websites for clients and charging maybe hypothetically $100 an hour for that work. So my time's pretty valuable if I was to go ahead and, and work in the yard. Tommy, on the other hand, uh, even though it takes him two hours to do my yard, would only be giving up two hours worth of work that he could do for some other neighbor. And perhaps if he was charging six bucks an hour, perhaps the other neighbor would, by the work that he would be giving up for another neighbor would be worth about $12. So certainly the cost to me of doing the yard work is much greater than the cost to Tommy. How do we define that cost? We would define that as opportunity cost. If I were to mow my yard, take care of it, pull the weeds and so on, I'd be giving up the opportunity to, to earn, let's say, $100 during that hour. So working on the yard means my opportunity cost is $100. For Tommy, working on my yard, he'd be giving up employment someplace else, but he'd be only giving up perhaps $12 uh, in the two hours that he would spend on my yard. We then say that Tommy has comparative advantage. Comparative advantage goes to whoever has the lowest opportunity cost. And I think you'd agree, thinking about it for just a second, that choosing between myself and Tommy, it would make at least more financial sense for Tommy to do the yard work. Uh, I could even pay him very generously, let's say $20 an hour for the work, and so he could earn $20 for me uh, doing my yard, and I'd still be coming out $80 ahead because while he did the work, I could be inside working on uh, websites. The idea of comparative advantage goes to the heart of trade between people and trade among nations, where uh, whichever trading partner has the lowest opportunity cost is the one that um, should actually produce the product and then sell it to the trading partner who has the higher opportunity cost. In this case, Tommy has the lowest. He's the one who should, to whom I should outsource my um, yard work since he has the lowest opportunity cost. Now, it's not always the case that one side has the absolute advantage and the other side has the comparative advantage. It's possible, in fact, often the case that one side will have both. But the key comes down to, in a trading situation, whoever has the lowest opportunity cost is the one who should make the good or provide the service and sell it to someone who has a higher opportunity cost.